Um, my name is Tex, and uh, I'm going to show you how I edit uh, real drums in Reaper. Um, today I'm working on a song uh, from my studio band called Opticus. Um, I'll put some links in the description if you want to check out some of our tunes. They're on uh, Spotify, iTunes, all the streaming platforms. So this is a song we tracked um, actually a long time ago, and we haven't um, did the newer version of it. So uh, I'm going to get this track ready, and this is how I edit the drums. Uh, and it's using a technique called uh, slip editing. So uh, let's just get into it. I'm going to play the track here, let you guys listen to it. So he's he's pretty on right there, but you can tell it's drifting a little bit. And we're just gonna I use this technique just to tighten things up and uh, make the tracks, uh, you know, on time. That's really key to getting a good good uh, sounding song. So um, I've been using this technique for a long time. Um, it's fat. It's a manual labor, but it's fast for me. It takes about thirty to forty five minutes, and it's like I said, it's manual labor, but at the end of the track, I know that every single hit that I addressed is... I've looked at the whole track, and so I know all the spot mics are how I want them to be. So um, that's that's kind of a peace of mind thing for me. So if you're into that, you're going to like this. So without further ado, let's, let's do this. So first thing you want to want to do is go up to the Actions menu here. Um, by the way, I'm on a Windows system. So um, go to Show Actions List, and I created... Um, a way I like to split items. So this is just, uh, it's called split items with group, but you can just put split items. That's all essentially it is. So if I show you this custom action that I made, um, it's basically made up of select item under mouse cursor, and you'll have to find that. If you want to set this up, you'll find it over here in the filter, and you just start typing that in, and it'll come up. Select it and move it over to here, and then do the next one. And then this last one is the ultimate thing that you'll do. So split items at edit cursor and it selects the media to the right and that's important. So once you have that set up, hit OK, get out of the actions menu and then you'll want to hit control P and it'll bring up the preferences menu. And so down about halfway under editing behavior, mouse modifiers, you want to click on that, okay? And then once this menu comes up, you want to scroll all the way to the top and select media item and then the behavior to the right you want left click okay and so I from the, my previous DAW I was in I held alt and clicked with the left mouse and that's how I split wherever I was at and I like that behavior so I've set this up like this so and it'll make sense in a minute so I I've selected this mouse modifier to alt and left click is that custom action I created. So there it is. Hit OK. And so now, wherever I'm at right here, wherever I chose, if I hold, let me delete that, and take off my, this, this button up here, alt S is your uh, snap. So um, I need to take that off. So alt S. So anywhere I have my mouse is where I'll cut. I, I like that behavior. So that's what we just set up there. That's that's key. So now let's get started. Um, my left hand is on the alt buttons, the control button, and the shift button. And that's that's kind of my resting position during drum editing. And then my right hand is on my mouse, obviously. So the left hand, the pointer finger is on alt, the ring finger is on control, and the middle fingers on shift okay so a couple quick things before we actually start doing this um, if you roll the mouse wheel it'll zoom in and out wherever your mouse cursor is okay so wherever you point the mouse say it's this uh, little fill right here I'll zoom right in on it okay that's good to know okay now if we hold alt and roll the wheel it'll go forward and backwards in the track okay that's also important. If we hold control and roll the wheel, 
let's see here. It will resize the tracks, okay? Also handy. Let's resize them a little more like that. Okay, and then if we hold both of them, Alt and Control, we can scroll up and down in our session. Okay, so that's why my hand is resting there constantly. So I'm not moving a whole lot with my two hands. So um, th the reason I changed that modifier is because the stock way to split is the letter S, and it's just a little bit cumbersome for me to constantly be looking down and looking for the S. So I just know that my right or my left pointer fingers on that alt button okay so that's that's the formation so let's get into this okay we got our snap off we're gonna take we're gonna right click on our snap settings and we want to make sure that this show grid line spacing is at 1 16th now that's just for doing a rock song that uh, tends to be a good resolution for me so that's why I select it and you'll see so let's get into it so this first hit I know that it's a double kick to a snare tom, or let's see here, no, double kick to a kick and some toms on the opening hit. So I'm going to treat this all as one thing, so I'll cut just before the kicks. Oops, one more important thing. I've got to group the tracks first. So go to the very end of your whole session and right click and lasso all your drum tracks and then hit the letter G and you'll see these neon green link signs. That groups them, so now they all behave when you cut something to move it, all the tracks move at the same amount of time. Uh, and you want to do that with multi-mic sources like drums um, because obviously you don't want to lose your phase coherency. Um, and if you want to know more about phase co coherency, there's plenty of stuff on YouTube to uh, look into. Uh, plenty of people explain it a lot better than I would. It's just uh, something that on multi-mic sources you need to be conscious of. So grouping them and moving around, they're all going to stay in the same um spots so you won't lose that phase coherency so here we go this this tom hit right here needs to go right here on this opening this um first measure of first beat of measure eight so we'll cut before this kick and we'll like i said holding alt and click will make your cut and keep holding it move over into the track and just slide click and slide it over also, while hold, you, you hold Alt down this whole procedure, you can hold it down the whole track, and then you scroll your mouse wheel forward. Still holding Alt, click ahead of it, move it on, scroll. That's pretty good. We'll leave that. We don't want this ultra tight. We just want it sounding in the ballpark. That's good. That's good. This one's way off, so we'll click. Now, when you get to something like this, if it's, if it's behind the beat, see, we want it to line up right here, you need to click before this before the grid line here so click a little bit before it and then drag it back let's zoom in here and another little thing too to move your crossfade if you if you move up on your crossfade you can hold shift and slide that crossfade wherever you want so we'll slide it back just a little bit and that's another thing i should point out too is have your auto crossfade on too and you can right you can uh, set your settings um in preferences i believe you can go in there and set how you want the crossfade to behave so okay carrying on alt held down scrolling ahead click pull back scroll ahead click pull back scroll ahead all while keeping alt down okay now you can see that this can kind of get fast you know like i said i've been doing this for about seven years and you can uh, really move through a track without thinking you're just looking Okay, so I'm going to do some of these right here. Scrolling through, scrolling through. Okay, I got a little close there. So I can see that hit right there is going to bleed into it. So we'll do the shift, pull back on crossfade. Okay, moving ahead. That needs to move way ahead. And that, as you move these ones that are way off, it tends to move the rest of the track uh, into place. So everything to the right, and that's that's part of that mouse modifier. You're clicking, and it's selecting everything to the right, and it's moving all that stuff. So there you go. Okay. A couple more, and then I'll play it back, and you guys can kind of hear the before and after. There, there. And you'll get to see these transients quick. If I'm moving a little bit fast, it's just trying to show you 
the speed that you could get to as you do this. And it's, like I said, when you get done with it, it's zero errors. Um, and that's what I really like about it. Um, when a band comes and uh, tracks a bunch of songs and they leave for the day, that's what I'll usually end up doing is just, um, you know, grabbing a beverage and sitting down here and just doing this. Um, and sometimes it's kind of, kind of relaxes me a little bit. So, oh, all right, let's check it out. Let's see what we got. So we did that much right there in what, five minutes, four minutes. All right, let's listen. Okay, there you go. So that's how I edit drums in Reaper. And uh, like I said, it, it's a great technique. And um, you know, when I found out how to do this, it was a game changer for me. And my uh, drum tracks kind of leveled up. So I hope this helps some of you guys out there. Um, I wish I would have known about this a long time ago. I know Reaper's been around. Um, but yeah, let me know in the comments if you uh, have any questions. And uh, I'll be mixing these drums soon. And I'll make a video on that. And all right, take it easy.